So this is the 2023 Gross Louis III uh, fat bike from Louis Garneau. This bike looks amazing and it is totally looking like a bike that's going to absolutely rip. Once you get the bike in the stand, you can go ahead and finish removing all the packaging that's on the bike. And from here, you want to get ready then to install the stem and the handlebars together. You want to pay attention to the gear shift cable. So here I'm just going to align the fork and the stem together, which I did. And then you want to make sure you don't get the gear cable caught behind the stem, like what I'm about to do right here. I was totally oblivious to it. I didn't even pay attention. Just got it caught. I tightened everything up and then I realized what I did wrong. So what you should do, or what I should have done rather, is make sure that cable was in front of the stem. So make sure you don't do what I did. Pull that cable out from behind the stem to make sure you don't have to do it twice. Once that's done, you want to get ready to install the front tire. Um, so we're going to have to remove this bleed block and then remove the through axle as well. Once we have the through axle removed, I like to put just a bit of grease on the threads to ensure that it, you know, will come out easily the next time that I want to get the through axle out. And then you can just gently remove and pull the uh, the bleed block out or the, the block there. These tires are massive. They're the 4.5 tires by Tureen Cake Eater. They're studdable, although they are not studded currently as you can see. And they're tubeless ready. These things are massive. It looks like they're going to roll over absolutely anything. Um, So once you have this tightened up, we're not going to worry about the torque just yet. We'll torque the bike at the end of the uh, at the end of the video. Go through everything and just make sure you have the torque all set to the correct uh, correct specifications. Given the spin here, I can definitely hear that the caliper and the rotor are making contact. Although right now I'm not going to worry about it. Before I start adjusting the caliper, I'm just going to set the bars in the proper position. So I found by putting that caribou or moose. Uh, logo right in the center of the bar that kind of got me in a good spot for my rise and sweep so just go ahead once you have that done and snug everything up again we can worry about the torque at the end of the video and now I want to space the levers uh, kind of in the right spot for me I find about a finger space between the end of the grip and the lever is a pretty good spot I try to put them at about 35 or 40 degrees um, I do have a protractor you can kind of see laying on the bench behind me there but really just whatever feels comfortable for you is probably a good way to do it or you can also use your iPhone sometimes in uh, other tools or your phone sorry maybe Samsung maybe iPhone whatever they often have a tool in there that you can kind of set the angle yeah the brakes are amazing there these SRAM level brakes um, they look absolutely awesome uh, I've just ridden it gently so far and yeah these things are gonna stop on a dime moving on to the random box of parts they gave you here open it up we'll go through it quickly looks like they sent us a couple manuals generic manual another generic manual a couple of zip ties pedals we'll need those uh, that's to adjust your crank to tighten that up reflectors uh, probably not gonna put those on and then we have this random bag. We're going to put this bag, this U connector here, and that's going to secure the brake cable along the mount mounting clip to the to the fork. Perfect. So once that's on, you can st see we're still getting a little bit of movement, and uh, it's going to rub up against the inner fork leg. So there's this other uh, cylindrical piece of rubber. We're going to install that right along the fork leg where, or the brake cable where the fork leg meets the brake cable and that's going to prevent excess rubbing and chafing and that's actually going to make the brake cable really secure now for the brakes that we're rubbing going to do is loosen off these five millimeter bolts with our allen key you want to loosen it off enough that you can actually physically move the uh, caliper and once that's removed I'm going to take a rubber band and I'm going to secure that rubber band to the brake lever, uh, essentially turning my brakes on right now. And from here I'm going to tighten up the brakes and that should put the caliper in a good spot in relation to the rotor. 
So once that's on, I'm going to go ahead and remove the rubber band and give the bike a spin. And you should hear that that should solve the issue. Normally when you're adjusting your brakes, uh, this is the way to do it and it's normally a pretty quick setup. You can move on to the rear brake now if your rear brake um, needs adjustment. Thankfully this bike came really well set up and um, yeah, there's no noise here so I don't need to adjust the rear brake at all. Now I was reading online on some reviews that the cassette wasn't on tightly and secured from the factory. It was super loose. So I'm going to take off the, I'm actually going to take off the cassette and remove the dork disc here or the smoke protector. And when I do that, I'm actually going to, um, after I'm done that, I'm going to reinstall the cassette and the lock ring that's on there and make sure that it's tightened up to the proper specification. I'm going to do this here rather than afterwards because once it's on the bike, I can't, um, I can't do that obviously. So the cassette normally gets tightened up to about 40 newton meters, anywhere from about 35 to 40 newton meters. I just set it to 40 newton meters, that seems to be a, uh, a good number. Well, it's actually the number that's specified, so I'm going to set it to whatever the manufacturer recommends it gets set at. If your, your limit screws on your de derailleur are set properly, you really don't need the smoke protector on there, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Uh, so I'm going to use that park tool. It's a park tool. Um, this one that I'm using here is the park tool FR5.2. And then a uh, park tool also has a 25.4 millimeter socket. And I just put that on with my socket wrench and I can just set it to 40 newton meters and go ahead and tighten that down. Right there you should see this torque wrench click, so I know I'm at the proper torque. Now from here I'm gonna re-grease the um, I'm gonna re-grease the uh, the threads on the rear axle again to make sure that when I want to take this out later on it doesn't get stuck, seized, or anything, and that uh, that's good to go. Man, this is uh, my first time working with MicroShift, and it actually works and shifts really, really nice. I'm super impressed. It's really responsive, really nice. The clutch on there looks fantastic. It has full adjustability on the clutch if you remove that little co cover, and um, I'm really, really impressed with this bike. The whole component package and the fit and finish on this bike are second to none. Uh, the MicroShift shifts great. The narrow wide pro wheel crank set looks amazing the SRAM brakes look fantastic again the whole finish on this bike is really just exceptional super happy uh, from here just gonna go ahead and set the torque on all the uh, all the components that we were talked about earlier if you have a torque wrench um, all the torque specs are labeled on the components that you want to uh, torque down so from here I think you're pretty much ready to get out and start riding so I hope this video helped you out and if it did, certainly it would help me out if you hit the like or subscribe button, or better yet, both. Anyway, thanks so much, guys.